Shark fans and Islanders, welcome back to another video in the Great White Shark series. Appreciate you all clicking on, thank you for your support. Today's video then, as you can tell by the title, is about the Big Blue out here. Is the sea around the British Isles too cold for the Great Whites? Is it viable? I'll tell you right now, off the bat, it absolutely mirrors conditions across the world that have large resident white shark populations. So it baffles me why they're not here. Also going to talk about food sources. Is there enough floating around in this stuff to keep a hungry great white going? Absolutely. Right, let's get to the video. I'll tell you some more. You've all probably seen it in the news. Great whites coming into British waters due to global warming. There may be some truth in that, but it's got nothing to do with the fact that great whites swim in warm waters. I'll tell you all the hot spots and their temperatures shortly. Great whites are a shark that can regulate their own body temperature, so above that of the surrounding water, part of the Lamnidae shark family, such as the Mako and Poor Beagles, which we have in our waters confirmed. They essentially heat their own muscles, but they do have to eat a lot to do so. So British waters then, what are our temperatures? So in winter, you're looking around about six to 10 degrees Celsius. And then in summer, around about 15 to 20. I mean, it can vary depending on where you are in the UK, but that's sort of the average. Places like uh, Cardigan Bay tend to be a little bit warmer uh, than other areas due to the nature of uh, their geographical area. So 24th of April, 1992, in Campbell Island, which is a sub-Antarctic island below New Zealand, Mike Fraser and a few others were snorkeling when he was uh, attacked by a four to five meter great white shark. This is the most southerly known shark attack by any shark that we know of. But interestingly, the water temperatures were at six to eight degrees Celsius, if that. So it just shows these big things are swimming around in very, very cold water. Our water's not actually that cold. I mentioned that our conditions mirror those of the hotspots with large white shark populations. Let's go through a few. Now, in the interest of uh, being semi-scientific, all my data is taken from a website called seatemperatures.org. Now, these guys have various calibrated buoys in the water which give them accurate year-round temperatures, okay? I haven't just made this up. So Mossel Bay, South Africa, this is where you see in Shark Week all the, most of the actions happen where you see the big great whites breaching. Killer Alley where all the seals are, around there basically. Between 15 and 22 degrees Celsius year-round. Adelaide, South Australia. Now it was round about here, Port Lincoln, that I did my great white shark cage diving stuff. Their temperatures vary between 12 and 20 degrees. I checked the temperature on the day of my shark dive and it was 16 degrees. It was a bit chilly actually. Bay of Biscay, this is the closest confirmed great white shark uh, to Britain, which is 168 nautical miles from Cornwall. Their temperatures are between 9 and 19 degrees Celsius year round. Uh, at the time, roughly, as best I can work out, when that shark was uh, captured in 1977, sea temperatures were approximately 15 degrees Celsius. I keep moving because I'm trying to take cover from the wind. About 45 mile an hour winds as I'm doing this. That's why there's no drone action right now. Nova Scotia. This is where uh, O-Search, uh, the shark trackers, are currently uh, been doing their operations from. They've tagged 84 great white sharks in this area and their water temperatures are between zero and 19 degrees. Uh, at the time of a lot of their tags, it's around about 12, 12 degrees. So it's pretty, pretty cold. With regards to the Expedition 22 that I want to carry out, looking for these great white sharks in British waters, one of the areas of interest, which I'll discuss a little bit later on food sources, is the Monarch Islands in Scotland. Their temperatures vary between seven degrees Celsius and 18 degrees Celsius. So not as warm as the likes of Devon in Cornwall, which averages in the summer 19 to 20 degrees Celsius. So to further sort of discuss water temperature, I'm going to look at three great white shark attacks that occurred in 2021, three different locations around the world. Sharks shouldn't be vilified for attacking people. We're in their environment. If we get nailed by one, it's kind of our fault, in my opinion. Let's start at the start of the year, 8th of January, 2021. Waihee Beach, New Zealand. 
Uh, a young 19 year old girl unfortunately lost her life to a great white shark attack. Uh, water temperature that day I have checked was 17 degrees Celsius. Uh, I have swam off North Island uh, last year and it's every bit as cold as, as Britain. 21st of April 2021, a Cape Town surfer went missing, never to be seen again. However, that day his board did wash up with large bite marks, triangular great white shark teeth trapped within it. Water temperature that day was 16 degrees Celsius. 5th September 21, I'll always remember this date, it's my daughter's birthday. Uh, in Sydney, Australia, in Emerald Beach, there was a fatal shark attack to a swimmer. That water temperature was 19 degrees Celsius. What do you think? Our water temperatures are clearly within range from the hot spots to the recent attacks I've talked about. So some sort of final thoughts on our water temperatures before we move on to food sources. British waters are absolutely optimal for great white sharks temperature wise. Uh, they're not too cold, they're not too warm, they're absolutely bang on. Obviously we've already proven that with that sub-Antarctic island attack that it doesn't matter even if they were really really cold. Interestingly earlier this year scientists identified that tiger sharks off Eastern Australia were most prevalent in approximately 22 degrees Celsius water. They always thought it was going to be much warmer, uh, but it's not, it's lower. That's quite interesting. Don't think we're going to see tiger sharks in our waters anytime soon. We all know that top of the uh, great white sharks uh, preferred menu are seals. And uh, in Scotland, they have the second largest gray seal colony in the world. The largest seal colony in Europe, approximately 80% of the seals around the UK are based in Scotland. So they've got about 30 to 40,000 grey seals and around about 7 to 10,000 common seals. Now this does interest me for the expedition because around about September, and thanks uh, Jerry for this information, uh, approximately 9,000 seal pups are born off the Monarch Islands. You know what I'm going to say. There is that saying, isn't there? Where there are seals, there are sharks. Where there are young seals, finding their sea legs, that's easy pickings. No wonder the orcas like it up there, hey? I was sent a, a seal picture. Thank you to uh, Paula and Martin for sending me the picture. So this is off this washed up on a beach in Twin, Gwynedd. Apologies if I've butchered that. What do you think? Do you think it's been attacked by a shark? It does look like it's a bite of some description. Uh, its carcass is fairly fresh, so I don't think it's it's due to like crustaceans of the sea having a go. But the story was that this washed up the day after someone who was fishing on a kayak had a tope bitten in half by a three meter mako shark. Comment below what you guys think. Sharks are cannibals. They will kill and eat each other. There's plenty of examples of that around the world. Uh, there's an increase in foraging fish uh, such as mackerel. And also, uh, off the coast of the Isle of Man, where I live, there was some very large bluefin tuna spotted the other day, which is ace. They have always been in our waters. However, they did get hammered uh, by fishermen before EU control stepped in. So they have recovered somewhat. For those who don't know, bluefin tuna will, will go charging after bait fish, and they can be well in excess of the size of a dolphin. And sharks are known to eat these. One other theory, is uh, I mentioned about the global warming earlier on. Some studies show that uh, plankton blooms are heading to shift more poleward and north, obviously, uh, which is a reaction to temperature changes. So we might see additional species uh, moving in response to more prey movements, perhaps. Uh, I'm going to have to go and take cover in the van. This is far too windy. To the van. A bit of uh, sort of shark news, updates, really. Something I didn't really know about in 2015. Ben Fogel, the... TV presenter, personality, adventurer. He's climbed Everest, I think, now. He went out, towed a whale out past the west coast. A whale cock is not a live whale. That'd be a bit savage, wouldn't it? Uh, past the west coast of either Scotland or Ireland. I don't know much about it. On the hope that a great whites would turn up to feed on it. They didn't turn up, um, which is a bit of a shame. However, I've just realised now that I did forget Cape Cod in Massachusetts off the United States. Uh, their water temperature varies between 3 degrees Celsius and 21 degrees. So a little bit colder than the UK, but within the same range during the summer months. Only like two months ago, eight great whites were seen feeding off a whale carcass. 
Now, Cape Cod's quite an interesting place because Great Whites were only confirmed there. I'll put the date up here. I can't remember. I think it's 2012. Uh, they weren't previously believed to be there, and now they're, they're fairly prolific. Also, back to Britain a bit more. Last month, or the month before, there was uh, the largest poor beagle shark was confirmed and caught in British waters, well over in excess of 500 pound in weight. It was captured and released. Now, interestingly about this is, for you who don't know, this is the closest relative to the great white shark and often confused with the great white shark. I recently seen some footage from uh, the oil rig incident where someone thought they'd confirmed a great white shark. On closer inspection, if you look at the more rounded dorsal fin, it's definitely a poor beagle, it's not a white shark. I'd like to thank Jerry Conway from uh, a previous great white shark in Britain expedition with Richard Pierce. He's been emailing me, giving me all sorts of uh, little nuggets of information. It's unbelievable. Uh, he did confirm that in 2011, when they tried the Scottish one, uh, they just had GoPros and lots of chum. Fair play to them. They did a great job. But what he did correct me with from a previous video, he said it's unlikely the, the white sharks that are up in British waters are juveniles. Uh, from the Mediterranean, he said, we would see a lot more of them captured around the Bay of Biscay due to the fishing there. But what he did say was, they're most likely to be big, mature adults coming in from the Atlantic, which kind of falls hand in hand with the fact that we've had four and five metre sightings up in those areas. They're not juveniles. In regards to the expedition, that's still my main priority for the channel, to show you guys uh, the expedition in 2022, out looking for great whites in British waters. I have mentioned this previously, but you've got to check this out. I was hoping to use it today, but Conditions are just horrendous. I'm not putting this in the water. This is an underwater drone, submarine, ROV, whatever you want to call it, capable of over 100 meters in the water. That's unbelievable. Can you imagine how good that's going to be when we're chumming the water? We get this thing underneath. Uh, I might even tow things with it, put 360 degree cameras on. It's going to be unbelievable. Full 4K lights, pincers, the lot. We've got, we're going for it. We're going full nerd on the technology, trying to find these great whites. Okay, guys, I hope uh, today's been informative. I really enjoy making these shark videos. Until the next one, where I get that ROV in the water and show you guys what it's capable of. I might even do a bit of chumming.